replacement. So we're beginning here with a velocity time function. All right. Um, part A, draw the sign diagram of velocity time, hence state the intervals when it changes direction. So if we want to draw a sign diagram, before we draw the sign diagram, I'm going to put the graph up here because that's going to come in handy a bit later. So if you want to graph this function, maybe looking at it like that, you, you can't really graph it. Okay, but one thing we can do is factorise it, can't we? We can express this as t take 3 and t take 1, all right, as two linear factors. And now you can see what the roots are. Okay, so you know that it crosses the x-axis at 1 and positive 3. Uh, that this is time, this is the velocity with regards to time. Uh, we also know that the y-intercept is positive 3. Okay, that's because when time is zero, we're going to have three. So it crosses the y-axis at three here. And we could work out the minimum point as well, but it's not really necessary for us to understand the graph. Here's what the graph looks like. So it goes down and then up. Remember in kinematics, we don't consider negative values of time. All right, so this is the velocity of time function. So if we want to draw a sign diagram, what's the sign diagram going to look like? We've got one, we've got three, and we're positive, negative, and positive. Okay? And how do I know that it's opening upwards? Because it has a positive A value. So that's the sine diagram. And then what we should recall from calculus, okay, if we have positive velocity and then negative velocity, it has changed direction. Alright, so it's changed direction at time is one and time is three. Calculate the integral from 1 to 3 of v of t and state its significance. So we can put this straight in our calculator, it just says calculate. So if we match this one up to 4, and we've got negative 4 on 3. Negative 4 on 3. Why is it when I evaluated this integral, I got a negative answer? Okay, the answer is if we're performing the integral from one to three, it's calculating this area, and because we've just calculated the integral from one to three, it's calculated this area as negative because it's below the x-axis. Remember, if we wanted to say what is the area between one and three and the x-axis? we would need to do the negative integral. Remember, we would do the top function, which is zero, take away the bottom function, which is the v of t function. We'd be finding that integral. Because we don't have a negative involved, it's given us a negative answer. Any area below the x-axis will always be negative unless we affect it, um, unless we manipulate it to make it positive. So that's gonna, we're gonna uh, work on that so state its significance. Well, four on three, okay? So that's the distance it's traveled between one and three, and it's traveled to the left, okay? Why? Because we have negative velocity when we are below the x-axis. So there's two parts to this. Calculate it, and now state its significance. Travels four on three units left. Now I can actually answer that in meters because our velocity is in meters per second. Okay. Part C. Find S of T. So find the displacement function. Well, if this is the velocity function, the displacement function is going to be the integral of it. So let's perform the integral. S of t is going to be the integral of the velocity function. So that's t squared take 4t plus 3. And we'll get t for 3 on 3. Take 4t squared on 2 plus 3t plus c. And we have 
can simplify a little bit. Okay, part D. Draw a motion diagram for the first five seconds. So if we want a motion diagram, we need all of the important information over the first five seconds. We need to know where was it initially when time is zero. What's the displacement when time is zero? We need to know the displacement when it changes direction. When does it change direction? At time is one and time is three. So we need the displacement at time is one and time is three. So they're the significant points, and then it finishes when time is 5. So we need to displace it when time is 5. Now we can calculate all of these, okay? You could do it by putting them into the displacement function here. Alright, so for instance, if I put in 0, when we're looking at time is 0, we're going to have the displacement is C. We don't know what C is, but we can have C. If I put in 1, okay, we can process it with 1 in it. The easiest way to do it is to graph this function, right? To graph this function. We can't graph the C, but we're just going to tack that on at the end of all of them. All of them are going to have this plus C, whatever the value, whatever the number of elements be. So I've done that, I've graphed it, and then I'm just going to G solve when time is 1, or trace when x is 1, y is 1.3 referring, which is 4 on 3, uh, when time is 3. all of the relevant information ready to produce a motion diagram. So let's draw the axes of the motion diagram. And our axis is going to be in terms of C because we've got this constant. We've got this constant. Um, so the first point where it begins is when is that point C. And it goes, that's 1.3 and then that's 6.6. .6. So it goes up to about 7. Seven, six, four, two. Just fill in a few gaps there. So here's C. This is two plus C, four plus C, six plus C, seven plus C. Whatever this number C is, C is a part of our axis. All right, and so let's draw the motion diagram. It starts here. This is S of zero. It moves to the right until it gets to four on three units. So 4 on 3 is about 1.3, so that's going to be about here, that's S of 1, and then it moves to the left until it gets back to C, that's going to be S of 3. So we've got moving to the right, moving to the left, okay? Let's look at our velocity diagram to confirm that. We have moving to the right, moving to the left, and now we're moving back to the right again. We're moving back to the right until we get to 6.6, .6, which is about here. That's the five. Okay, so there's our motion diagram. Okay, part E. Determine the total distance over the first five seconds. I'm going to show you two procedures here to determine the total distance. The first procedure is to use our motion diagram. Okay, so we know that that distance is 4 on 3, and this distance is also 4 on 3. So it travels from there back to the point where it began. So if we think of the total distance, we've got 4 on 3 plus 4 on 3 plus how far is it from here to here? 20 on 3 units. Okay, so then the total distance that it travels over this interval is 24 on 3. Okay, so that's the first way we can work it out. The second way is from our velocity time diagram. 
What did we just do? Okay, we said the area under the velocity curve is going to tell us the total distance. So if I go the area from 0 to 1 of V of T, that's going to tell me this area. And then I need to add the area from 1 to 3, but the negative of it. I said we need to manipulate it. We need to make it positive so that when we combine them together, all of the air segment areas are positive. And that's going to add up and tell us that total distance. So, we've got from 0 to 1, that's going to tell us that area. That's going to be the distance travelled between 0 and 1. We've got the area from 1 to 3 under the velocity curve. That's going to be the distance travelled to the left. And then we want to know what about from 3 to 5. Okay, from 3 to 5, we need to know this area here. Okay, so if we evaluate this, we're also going to get 28 on 3. Okay, so the two procedures we can use. We should be competent with both of those. All right. So using the motion diagram, we've done a lot of that in calculus. Now we're introducing you to how we can use the curve to find the displacement at the distance. All right. So that being our answer to part E. All right. Any questions? Part F. Find the displacement. All right. So an object's displacement is just the integral from when it begins to when it ends of the velocity function. Okay? Why is that? If you calculate this, if you calculate the integral from 0 to 5, here's what it's going to do. It's going to go this area, take away this area, plus this area. Why is that going to be the displacement? How far it's moved to the right, take away how far it's moved to the left, plus how far it moves to the right. Okay, so that calculation will determine it. How can we work it out from our motion diagram? We go, how far is it from where it started? Started here, finishes here, what's that distance? 20 on three units. So two ways again to evaluate the total displacement. Using a motion diagram, using integration techniques. So let's have a go at 5C.2.